Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we are gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace, hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that our god saves our god saves there is hope in silence of a heart that believes itself defeated by loss, by pain, by fear. Our hope nailed to a cross, our own faith depleted at the sight of no movement, a body inert. But it is not the end. At the sound of the gravestone rolling, a new story has unfolded. Death has been defeated. Our hope is alive. Jesus is alive. We raise our hands in victory. By his resurrection, we are set free. He blows a wind of life and brings us back to the light. He is risen. Our Messiah is alive. He breathes and the darkness trembles. He speaks and our future shines. By his sacrifice, we are now saved. By his grace, we can all rise. Here rejoicing in the sky, the grave could not hold him. The veil has been torn. Our Christ has won over death, over sin, over ache. By his power, all chains break. He is victorious. He is the way. He is the resurrection and the life. And by his wounds, we're made alive.
Good morning. We want to thank you for joining us here in worship and online. We have a few announcements to make. First of all, um, we have our fourth installment uh, of our sermon series, The Flowering of Our Faith. And this purpose of our five purposes today is service. And uh, if you want to, come closer here after service and just look at the beautiful flowers that Ben Clark has drawn, different flowers for each of our uh, 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 purposes we've, set, we've talked about so far, witness, fellowship, worship, and now serve today. Thank you, Ben. Uh, next week is Grow at Lifelong Learning. And uh, kind of to fit in with that, we have our confirmation service as part of our worship next Sunday. Uh, four young men with their faith statements and um, the Spirit confirming their faith. And we look forward to you being there to support them next Sunday. I'd like to introduce to you our worship deacon, uh, Mary Crone. And uh, we would like to, she would like to share with, with all of you a message today. Mary. Good morning. Good morning. So you all are and we are supplying. So we, on um, June 19th, will go to two services. We will have a 9 a.m outdoor worship and we will have an 11 o'clock traditional inside worship um, and so we need to make this happen so there are a couple things that you should be aware of the first is wonderful volunteers the last time we had the outdoor service helped us get things outside and set things up but for a variety of reasons we really don't have any volunteers this year so if you want outdoor worship we are asking you for your help. Um, we need help with chairs. One way to help is just to bring your own chair so that we don't have to provide them. But we need help bringing chairs in and out. We need help bringing speakers and the mounting poles outside and bringing them back in. We need help with microphone stands. We need help carrying out keyboards and bringing them back in. We need help carrying out rhythm stuff, whether that be a kit or bongos or shakers or whatever is the um, rhythm of the day. Um, we also need help carrying out the altar and the altar um, elements and bringing them back in. Um, if carrying things is not your thing, if you're not a workhorse, that's okay. Um, we need some tech team help. And so we need help um, at the 9 a.m. for listening. So listening, are we in balance? Is somebody's voice too loud? Is it just car noise? What's going on? That kind of stuff. We also need some help with camera work. We also need help then at the 11 o'clock. It's been a really long time since we've had two services. And so we need double what we used to have. Um, and then we also need some help because currently we will not be able to live stream the outdoor service. So we will be streaming the 11 o'clock service, and then that has to get processed after the service runs. And so we would also need some help with some video processing after the service, all right? And so we will work with Leslie to get a sign up sent out so you can sign up to help. But without your help, then the outdoor service is gonna be a little bit complicated. Um, and so we really need all the help we can get from you all. Thank you. How appropriate that we're talking about serving to make sure we have our worship services this summer on our service focused day. Well, pray about it, and uh, there are lots of little ways you can help, and we hope that you can. Please rise as we begin our worship. So look for a flock note about that. Let's begin our worship. On this Sunday, we gather for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you teach us that without love, our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your Spirit, we may know your goodness through our service to each other. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing.
lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 9 through 29. Luke writes, About noon the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again a second time, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. Now, while Peter was greatly puzzled about what to make of the vision that he had seen, suddenly the men sent by Cornelius appeared. They were asking for Simon's house and were standing by the gate. They called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Look, three men are searching for you. Now get up, go down, and go with them without hesitation, for I have sent them. So Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? They answered, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, who was well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging. The next day he got up and went with them, and some of the believers from Joppa accompanied him. The following day they came to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, worshipped him. But Peter made him get up, saying, Stand up, I am only a mortal. And as he talked with him, he went in and found that many had assembled. And he said to them, You yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. Now may I ask why you sent for me? Please stand if you are able for the gospel. The gospel reading is from John from chapter 13, verses 12 through 17. John writes, After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Will the kids come forward for a special message? It's great to see you kids. Uh, I've got a Bible message for you. Uh, let's see here. I'm a little disorganized uh, today. I've got all these things for you for your me message, but I haven't got them all in the box yet. Um, I'm having a great deal of trouble here. Hmm. 
Yeah, oh. Can, can we put these things in the box? Can you help me? Each of these things goes in the box, okay? Can you take something and put it in the box? Here you go. Oh, thank you. I was so tired and you helped me. Oh, here you go. All right. Go back to your seats, if you will. I, now I'm finally ready. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you for helping me put these things in the big box. You know what? What you did reminds me of one of our Bible lessons for today. The Apostle Peter was praying one day, and all of a sudden he heard a voice in his heart, in his heart, telling him to help other people. And that's what you just did. You helped me. You heard a voice asking you to help me, Jen's voice, and you responded to that voice. You helped me a lot. Thanks. Now, sometimes God talks to us through other people, like through Jen today, or sometimes it's a voice that only our heart can hear. Can you put your hand on your heart? Sometimes we see someone in need, close by or someone we don't know, and a voice inside, a voice from God to our heart, tells us to offer to help that person. And we feel so good, don't we, after we've helped another kid or helped our mom or dad or sister or brother. We feel so good about it. So let's look for ways to help others. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I'm thankful for the kids who helped me today. And we need to help each other all the time. We're thankful that we are helped, we kids, but help us to share the love you have inside of us and help others and serve others. Give them a boost. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Well, grace and peace to you all from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. If you look on a map, you'll see the Israelite city of Joppa, an ancient city, now a part of the modern city of Tel Aviv on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, and that Joppa has a spectacular view. It lies 125 feet above that Mediterranean Sea on a rocky cape. For many years, Joppa was the only natural harbor between Egypt far to the south and Acre in Lebanon far to the north. As such, Joppa has always been a prominent locale. Armies across the area, of course, then sought to conquer Joppa and use it. Ships for hundreds and thousands of years have been launched from Joppa and have come back to Joppa all the time. Two men of the Bible came to Joppa, separated in time by 800 years. The first of the two men, a prophet in the time of King Jeroboam of Israel, was named Jonah. Yes, that Jonah. As we read in the book of Jonah, this prophet had just received a call from God at the beginning of the book. God had proclaimed to Jonah, go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. The very next verse, Jonah 1 verse 3, is startling. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish, to flee from the presence of the Lord. So Jonah went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So Jonah paid his fare and went on board, we read, to go with the people on the ship to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. Wow. You see, Jonah was leaving on a ship to go all the way to the Spanish end of the Mediterranean Sea, somewhere near Gibraltar, about as far from Nineveh as you can get. Why? Well, because Jonah loved Israel and hated the Assyrian Empire, its capital, Nineveh. This empire was a constant threat to the nation of Israel, the northern ten tribes. And the Assyrian Empire would later destroy all of Israel. 
I imagine Jonah. I see him about to depart, looking out to the Mediterranean from that Joppa promontory. I see him planning to defy God and head west. Well, he never got there. Jonah would meet up with a certain great fish before then. Now, the second of the two men in Joppa who arrived there 800 years later was probably also thinking about defying the Lord's command. It was Peter. He had just been traveling to Joppa to heal a prominent Christian there, Tabitha. Peter, seeped in prayer by the power of God, raised Tabitha from the dead and caused many there to believe in the God of Jesus. Then Peter decided to stay in Joppa a while. He was praying one day on the roof of the house where he was staying when Peter received a strange dream that God sent to him three times. He needed to see it three times. The Spirit of God was talking to Peter through that dream. The voice, as it's first called, the voice of the Spirit, got to the point. What God has made clean, you must not call profane, Peter. Now, the word profane in Greek literally means common. Jews at that time called Gentiles all too common. All they, the Jews, were, by implication, uncommon. Uncommonly blessed by God to be far above everybody else in the world. But up on that roof, while Peter had that same view of the sea that Jonah had years earlier, he found that he had the same challenge Jonah had. Luke tells us that Peter was greatly puzzled and still thinking about this vision from God he had just received when the three men that Cornelius, the Roman centurion, had sent had arrived to see Peter, just at that moment. It was then that the Holy Spirit said to Peter, Look, three men are searching for you. Now get up, go down, down from the roof, and go with these men without hesitation. For I, said the Spirit, have sent them. Peter must have been shocked to find these three men. The Spirit didn't say whether they're Gentile or Jew. Surprised to see that these men were Gentile and not Jewish. He was trained as a Jew not to have anything to do with Gentiles. But something happened to Peter between the time that he was on the roof praying about what the Spirit had revealed to him and later, you know, what Peter said to the men when he saw them at the door. Something happened. Something of divine origin. Let me explain. Since Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh and criticize their evil ways and warn them of destruction, we don't often think of Jonah as serving the people of Nineveh. But he was. But when eventually, after being belched out of the big fish, God changed the mind of Jonah and he went and preached in Nineveh, we see that Jonah did the Ninevites an important service. For they repented from the king on down. Hundreds upon thousands upon thousands repented. Thanks to the message Jonah brought to them. Now Jonah himself had no feeling for the people of Nineveh. Nothing positive. In fact, after they repented, Jonah sulked. Sulked when God relented from punishing the Ninevites. Jonah was angry that God had relented from punishment. He said to God, Lord, is not this what I said while I was in my own country? What you, O God, have done for the Ninevites is why I fled to Tarshish in the beginning. For I knew that you were a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to repent from punishing people. It's almost as if he said, what kind of God are you? For Jonah, there were people he wanted to serve and other people he didn't want to serve. Even though, as God replied, these Ninevites, you know, did not know their right hand from their left. Peter, like Jonah there in Joppa, was confronted with a choice. Would he serve these three Gentile outsiders? Or would he be like Jonah and run away from that challenge? The purpose, out of the five purposes that we are focusing on upon today, is service. It comes out of God commanding in the Old Testament to love your neighbor as yourself. But let's admit it. 
there are times when we do not want to love and serve our neighbor. For various reasons, we don't want to follow through with God's calling us to help this or that person. One of the results of not serving others is that we do not grow as Christians. Our, our faith does not flower as it should. My gardener friend has let me know that we gardeners are called to serve our plants, not just by planting them. You know, well, I like to brag about that. We planted all this stuff. But by continuing to take care of them day after day and week after week. We read, I read in what was sent to me, to keep flowers or flower pots blooming continuously, fertilizing is a must. No matter how good the soil Potted plants need additional energy throughout the season, throughout a plant's life, in order to last. The same is true with all the people around us. People around us made in the image and likeness of God. Our divine call to serve others also calls us to avoid looking down on those we are to serve. To avoid pulling a Jonah. We are called to regularly check in on others and realize unlike Jonah that our service to others is very necessary for the Lord to be able to love and serve his people back to Peter when Peter went down to meet these men he did not hem and haw he obeyed the spirit and did not hesitate he said to the three men I am the one you're looking for what is, this, is the reason for your coming to see me? Yes, he didn't know yet, you know. You see, Peter allowed himself at that moment to be transformed by the Spirit as he traveled down those stairs. He's, he was ready to help these men no matter what. He put aside any qualms he might have had, perhaps reflected on his own need for God, and Peter humbly began to identify with people he had never identified with before in his life. That's one of the keys to service. He not only reached out to these three Gentiles, by going with them, he ended up even helping their master, who was one of those hated Roman centurions, no matter what they said about him. You see, just as Nineveh was the enemy for Jonah, Rome was the enemy to any good Jew at that time. But Peter went ahead and visited Cornelius and the many people gathered at the house of Cornelius. And through Peter's act of service that day, the Spirit converted many Gentiles that very day. Peter witnessed the Spirit at work in these Gentile people as they listened to him. And that the Spirit, he noticed, was opening a door that led Jesus to live in and save many Gentiles from then on. Gentiles, like you and me. What was true for Peter then is true for you and me today. Peter was willing to take risks to serve others. Sometimes we are called to take risks to do the same. And you know, it's funny. Peter, Peter brought along six other Jewish Christians from Joppa to Caesarea in order to, later to explain to the leaders back in Jerusalem what might happen and did happen. <laughs> he knew he was causing trouble. You see, Peter violated Jewish law when he entered the, that Gentile home in Caesarea. Afterwards, Peter and these six witnesses who came with him immediately went to Jerusalem to explain just how the Spirit of Jesus had led Peter to serve in this new and dramatic way. My friends, we too are called often by the Spirit, to serve others around us in new and dramatic ways. Look for it. In our gospel today, we see Jesus serving the disciples in a new and dramatic way by washing their feet. At that time, foot washing was considered a despicable, slave-worthy task. Feet in those days, if you can imagine, encrusted with, were encrusted with Dust, muck, manure from scores of creatures, as Glenn McDonald recently wrote. Things that would cake one's feet on a daily basis, 
<laughs> Peter objected that night to Jesus washing ugly, smelly feet, of course. He saw Jesus. He was lifting Jesus up, he thought. He saw Jesus is too holy to stoop to serving others in this degrading fashion. Jesus agreed that certain kinds of service were seen by the world as degrading. He, he agreed to that, yet should not be seen as degrading by God. He commands the disciples and you and me, if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Very truly, he added, servants are not greater than their master. We servants of Christ are called like our master to sometimes do difficult things. Jesus is not, of course, just talking about foot washing. Think, if you will, of all the things God may call upon you to do that the world or your inner self would call degrading. Think about how God may call upon you to be the primary caregiver of someone who is helpless. Think about caring for someone whom the world thinks is obnoxious. Think about caring for someone who is, is not openly grateful to you. But also think about how we are sometimes like all those people. And recall that Christ died not only for us, but for them. And through a degrading death on a cross to boot. Peter was tempted by the world around him to feel degraded by hanging out with Gentiles and other outsiders. But that is not the way of our Lord Jesus, thank God. Nor is it the way of his God, the God who is unconditional love. A couple other things about the particularly Christian way of service to others. First, we are not to serve to bring glory to ourselves. When Peter arrived. Cornelius, as we read, bowed to him as if he were a god. And Luke writes, Peter made him get up immediately, saying, I am only a mortal. God cannot shine through our actions if we prefer to shine instead. It's not about us. Secondly, it's important not to, to let our service agendas be, important, be more important than the agendas of those we serve. You'll notice when Peter arrived, he didn't say to Cornelius and company, hey, Here's what we're going to do. He said, now may I ask why you sent for me? He was open to whatever the Spirit had sent him there for. Thirdly, my gardener friend tells me that the best way to fertilize and care for plants is to avoid doing just a spectacular thing or two with them. The key we read in this passage sent to me is to provide nourishment in slow, weaker doses to keep the plants growing gradually. Like in our Nora ministry, we are there to help for the long haul. The same is true for us Christians individually. Slow and steady service is far more effective, and again, more about the people we serve than about us. And finally, fourthly, we Christians tend to serve others but feel uncomfortable being served. We like to be in control, and when we serve, sometimes we like it because we're in control of the situation. But true community was never built on a one-way street. The Christians of the New Testament knew this was important. We find the word mutual used constantly by them. Be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, states Paul. He adds, love one another with a mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Hebrews 13, 1. Let mutual love continue. 2 Peter 1, 7. Show godliness by way of mutual affection for one another. And as we, will, as we are about to sing, I lift up this quote from that song. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. There's such joy in mutual service. It's why Jesus declared today of the service Christians can provide. He said, you're blessed if you do them. You know, one scholar said of Peter and his conversion of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. You know, the principal subject of this chapter is not so much the conversion of Cornelius as the conversion of Peter, the one who was helping. Right? 
The Spirit literally in the Greek, this is a new one for me. The Spirit literally in the Greek tells Peter, Maiden diakrinomenos, which is pretty close to don't discriminate. It means that. It almost sounds the same. Don't discriminate, in this case, against non-Jews. So let us not let our prejudices and selfish concerns get in the way of the surprising calls to service that God sends our way. Let us live out our own Acts 10 events of service to others that we would never have imagined would ever have occurred. Let us be empowered, as Peter was, by the Spirit's call to serve. And let us let the Spirit transform us as Peter was transformed to be the heart, hands, and voice of you, Lord, of God. Amen. see online giving on your screen, but what I want to focus on today in giving is service. One way to serve, as you have done, is by your financial gifts to this church that in turn support service to each other and our community. Your financial gifts allow us to have this worship service and others, to educate one another of all ages in Christ to have fellowship events here at church with one another and for one another. But especially also to reach out in evangelism for outside groups to use our facility, to help convert people to Christ, and in our service events at Nora or the, the, the um, Sharing Place or down in Chile or many other places, free medical clinics we support here. Your giving supports other kinds of service. And I thank you.
Let us now proclaim the words of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together wherever we are as a church. As we seek to flower our faith during this Easter season, help us realize, Lord, that every day we can experience, like nutrients, the call to serve and love others as you call us to do. In the process of serving others, as you know, Lord, you build in us a strong faith, a strong faith that feeds our souls, fills our hearts, and strengthens our spirits. Help us understand that we are inspired first and foremost by the spirit of Jesus, the great servant of all, the risen one who washed the feet of his disciples. Please guide us through your Holy Spirit to listen to you at all times and follow your will, that we may be a big help to other people and fulfill your prayer that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Guide us to be your loving hands that help your loving feet that journey to give aid, and your loving voice that gives encouragement and hope to others. Let us learn from your holy word and through prayer so that you, Lord, may be given the opportunity to guide us into being your servants at all times. We pray today for all victims of violence all over the world. For instance, in the Ukraine, we pray also, for instance, for the people of Buffalo who are suffering from the horrible incident yesterday. Be with all families who are victimized by violence that they may know there is hope ahead. O Holy Spirit, please be with others who are in need of your special healing, your great comfort and your awesome strength. Be with those sick or injured in our midst such as Bob, Judy, Marilyn, Bob, Kim, John, Vaughn, Wayne, Julie, Betty and Jim, and Jane. Oh Lord, we pray for others as well who are in our hearts, family and friends. We pray for all in this moment of silence. We have prayed for these who are dear to us, O Father, and now we put them into your hands, trusting in your forgiveness and love, through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. Again, if you wish to come forward, you will refrain at the beginning from eating with the others the the body and blood of Christ. Just a reminder. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this and remember me and my ways. After supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant, a covenant written in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of all sin. Drink this and remember me. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you.
the blood of Christ shed for you. Now from what you have just received, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in his grace and peace now and forever in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're very thankful that you could join us for worship. We'll continue our sermon series for the next couple weeks and then Pentecost. Remember next week, please support our youth as they become confirmed in the faith. And you can see, uh, as it says there, old worship services and sermons on our website, kogcarmel.org. Now please, go in peace and serve the Lord.